Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. My guest this uh, segment is Ms. Karen Weaver. Of course, she's running for the City of Flint Mayor. Before we speak with her, though, I want to make sure that I encourage each and every one of you to get out and vote. It's not a single thing anymore. you got to fill the car up, all right? I don't want you going to the polls by yourself. Pick up your auntie, your uncle, your nephew, your cousin, the neighbor next door, and make it a party, all right? We have got to get out and vote. With that said, I'm going to ask the first question. And it always is for you to tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. okay. My name is Karen Wheat. Okay. I was born and raised here in Flint. Mm -hmm. First, let me just say I'm, I'm a child of God. Okay. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I have three kids. And I'm uh, the daughter of the late Dr. T. Wendell Williams and Marion Coates Williams. Okay. Those were my parents. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest of three. I've been married to my childhood friend, Dr. Rex Weaver, for 28 years. Yeah, and we have three wonderful kids. So that's just a little bit about me. Uh, my parents are the ones really that inspired me a lot and got me where I am today. Uh, some of the things they've done in the community. Uh, my dad was the first African-American elected to the Flint Board of Education. Nice. My mother was the first African-American classroom teacher in Flint. Okay. So they really inspired me. Uh, community service was part of what they instilled in me and it's in my DNA. And it caused me to want to continue what they did, to build on the foundation that they set and do some more for the city of Flint. So most importantly, I'm a lifelong member of Flint. I've lived here my entire life, which is 50 plus years. So I'm someone that cares about Flint. I love Flint. And I want to bring a change to Flint. All right, well, let's talk about your credentials. Sure. What in your background, what in your education, what in your training is preparing you for the role of the mayor here in the city of Flint? Well, I've had a lot of uh, training that I think has prepared me. I was in private practice originally. Okay. Uh, but from private practice, I went on to my children's health center. I worked there about 20 years. In the last 10 years, I was uh, department head. I was director of behavioral services, and I was part of the management team. And to be part of the management team required certain quality, certain skill set. Uh, we were worth about 200 million at that time. And so we had to be disciplined. We had to be fiscally responsible. I had to learn how to delegate and, and work with people and collaborate and partner with different agencies and organizations to make things happen, to get things done. I had to have those same set of skills. When I was at Innes Center for Children, I was the chief of operations there. And I had to know about budgeting and financing and grants and, and um, personnel issues. So those are some of the things that I have in my background. I'm also a business owner. My husband and I started our second business here in Flint. We've had Weaver Family Dentistry for probably about 30 years now. And more recently, three years ago, we started Shea Lavelle Boutique. And it's a small business, and we sell natural hair, skin, and body products. So those are some of the things I've done. I've had a lot of community service. I've served on boards, and I'm currently serving on boards. I'm on the Hurley Hospital Board of Managers, the Community Foundation, Priority Children. And prior to that, I was on the Flint Institute of Arts Board, and I was the Freedom Fund Chair for the Flint Branch NAACP. So, as you can see, I've been really, really engaged in the community. Well, you know, here's, here's the biggest question for me. And as a Flint type, I'm sure you're aware. Uh, we've been through two, three emergency managers. We currently have a transition board. We also have a city manager. What is making you want to be the mayor? That's a good question. And that's a question that a lot of people ask. Why would you even want to step into that role? Mm -hmm. And part of it is what I said earlier, because I care about Flint. I love Flint. We haven't had a voice. We haven't had a voice in quite some time because of all of the things that you just mentioned. And we need a voice. Somebody needs to speak up and speak out about the issues that concern us. And I haven't seen that take place. I haven't seen the leadership that's necessary. So that's one of the reasons, is to bring a voice back and for change. Things need to be different in Flint. We deserve better in Flint. 
So those are the reasons I'm running. And I believe that I, I can bring about that change. I believe I'm the leadership that's needed. And I believe I can work with those groups. There's a laundry list of things that are need attention in Flint. We've got water issues. We've got public safety issues. We've mm -hmm. got street light assessment issues. Where do you start? Well, those are some of the top priorities for a Weaver administration. You talked about it. Water the crime rate, jobs, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, th those are huge issues and those are huge concerns. We need to do something about that. Let's, let's talk about neighborhood revitalization because I believe they all work together. We need more neighborhood revitalization. We've been tearing down abandoned houses. We need to tear down abandoned houses, but we need to build up homes as well. We need some houses because this is wonderful downtown. A city needs a thriving downtown. I believe that. I love downtown. But if we don't build neighborhoods in other places, we won't have anything to attract other families. Everyone can't live downtown. So we need neighborhoods to be stabilized and revitalized. We need a tax base. That's how we bring one, is to have neighborhoods because you're paying property taxes. You're paying water bills. You're doing those things that generate funds. And so we have to have that. And I think that's something that's been lacking, is a strong neighborhood revitalization plan. We have to have public safety. We can look at community policing. It goes on in some areas, a small area of the city of Flint, I would say, like downtown. But community policing needs to be enforced throughout the entire city. And that's something that hasn't happened. If we could do that, that would help with the public safety issue. That we need to get funds to get more equipment, new equipment for our police. We need body cameras, we need car microphones. We need to work with consumers' energy so we can get the trees cut down and we can have better lighting in our neighborhoods to make them safe because that's what people need is to feel safe. If you remember how downtown used to be, it used to be kind of desolate. People weren't coming downtown. They didn't feel safe coming downtown. But there was investment that came to downtown. And now downtown is thriving. Well, if we'd done that same investment on the north side, or the east side, or the west side, or the south side, you know, there are other areas that make up the city of Flint. And if we'd done that investment in other areas, and if we do it, people will come there as well. So those are things that we need to do. Those are ways that bring, bring jobs. You know, we have things to attract, to, to attract businesses to Flint, but that's how you bring jobs. We have to have places for people to live. We have to have safe neighborhoods. We need to be a champion and advocate for clean and affordable water. Uh, that's how you get people to come. We've got some things that uh, are attractive to businesses, especially if you're a business that needs shipping and freight. We have Bishop Airport. We have two major railways. We've got three major expressways. We've got the colleges, the universities. We've got these hospitals. And we've got a lot of vacant land. There are things that are attractive to businesses, but we've got to promote ourselves better. So there are some things that we can do in-house to, to, to make things better, to attract businesses. And you know what? I think if we could do those things, if we, when we do those things, let me put it that way, when we do those things, it, it enhances the school system. You know, we, have, we, we had a wonderful community school system. Uh, this was a place that people came from around the country to look at our school system and try to, to emulate our school system. There was a time when Flint was one of the richest communities in the country. So we were a model for other places, and we can be a model again. But if we do those things, it, it all works hand in hand, and each one enhances the other. And I know that uh, education doesn't fall, you know, it's not an official responsibility of the mayor's office, but I take it on as a personal responsibility uh, because education was important in my family. It was very important. So those are the things that would be top priorities in a Weaver administration. Voter apathy is horrible here in Flint. Our voting turnout is just terrible. Is there anything that your campaign is doing maybe differently to encourage people to come out and vote? You know, when, when these primary elections are so under-attended. They are under-attended, and I do hope people come out and vote. And um, 
we have been talking with people, I hope everybody's been talking with people about the importance of voting because we almost lost it. We already haven't had a voice. It was almost a write-in campaign. People talked about some ridiculous things as far as the election. And um, I hope that's something that will inspire people and make them realize the importance of coming out to vote. We, they, everybody has to do it. Everybody has to come out and vote because every single vote is important. My last question before I ask you to turn to the camera and encourage people to vote for you is, again, we've got, uh, we're not under emergency oh. management, but we're under a city administrator and the advisory board. Mm -hmm. Do you see that there's even a need for a mayor with those two entities really guiding the city? Well, those two entities shouldn't be guiding the city. The mayor should be guiding the city. The last time I checked, we were still under a strong form of mayor. Uh, that's what the city charter says that we are under a strong form of mayor. And right now we're in violation of the charter, to be perfectly honest, that's what's going on. So yes, I do see a need. I see a need uh, for a mayor. Uh, there, besides the mayor, the, the mayor and city council are the elected officials. Those are the elected officials. So yeah, I do see a need because the mayor is supposed to be the leader of the city, is supposed to be the voice of the city. And like I said before, we have not had that voice. And so it's time for us to have a voice for Flint and for all of the residents of Flint, not just downtown, but for the north side, the south side, the east side, and the west side of Flint, because that's what makes up our city. Okay. So yes, there's a need. we got about a minute left. And what I want you to do, just look right in the camera and encourage people to vote for you. Encourage people to vote for me. Well, first, you know what? I'd like to let you know, if you want to know more about me, come to my website. Visit my website. It's www.caringaboutflint.com. Uh, you'll learn more about what I have to say. But I want your support. I'm asking for your support. I'm asking for your help. Because I know that together, we can make Flint thrive again. It can be a thriving city. But I do need your help. I do need your support. And I would love for you to come and vote for me. I, I want you to look at my website, stop by my headquarters, and please come out and vote because I can't do it alone. I need your vote. So I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for the time. And God bless you and the city of Flint. Thank you so much for speaking with us. You guys, there'll be more Meet the Candidates.